Uh, call the sure. member Ian McKelvey. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, it's a, um, I guess a long time in the coming, uh, the opportunity to speak on this bill. And I must uh, commence by first acknowledging, I guess, uh, the people who are no longer here who did a lot of work on that bill, and, and we have a number of them. And uh, Shane Arden, who cha chaired the uh, Primary Production and Select Committee, as mentioned by Damien O'Connor. Uh, Shane Jones, who had a large input into a lot of things on primary production, and I will mention a bit later in my uh, few words on this. Eric Roy, very experienced man. Uh, Colin King. So a number of that committee that dealt uh, at length with this uh, uh, topic have now gone from the House. I also want to acknowledge the other members of that committee who spent a lot of time on it and I think on the whole did a pretty good job and I think we've come up with a pretty good solution. Obviously with the opportunity to change one or two things in the course of, uh, of the uh, committee stages but nonetheless I think the bill has got to a good space. As the previous uh, two speakers have said, this is probably one of the most important pieces of legislation that will pass through this House as it underpin underpins the magnificent beast that is our livestock farming industry one that returns over half of our gross income. As we've heard, this bill makes changes to the Animal Welfare Act 1999 to improve the enforceability, clarity and transparency of New Zealand's uh, all-important animal welfare system. The teeth provided in the act enactment of this bill will come via regulations provisions which will be developed by the National Animal Welfare Advisory Committee. This is a committee of extremely competent practitioners from across the sector appointed for their expertise, and we can be confident they are both competent and independent and will do their job very well. They are also required to consult widely on any uh, recommendations they may make in this field. We received a huge number of submissions which covered five basic categories, uh, 12 industry groups, 20 animal advocacy groups, eight professional bodies such as veterinarians and, and the like, uh, 10 expert individuals and numerous private individuals. We heard close to 50 of those uh, submissions over eight weeks. The real challenges we uh, had related to what many consider historic practices, and in fact the previous speaker, Damien O'Connor, uh, referred to those, and the Honourable Shane Jones had much to say on this matter. Issues such as doing horses' teeth, which to those of us who play with horses is a pretty simple matter, but for those who are submitting on this bill, simply uh, clearly wasn't a simple matter. Uh, and so, so things that we've always taken for granted in our care of animals are things that, are ch that challenge a lot of our community who don't have the same, I guess, empathy or understanding of animals. And so the bill has dealt with a lot of those complex issues. Uh, clause uh, 56, new section 183b2, related to, uh, or the regulations relate to surgical and, and uh, painful procedures. We had a large discussion on this. Uh, particularly contributed to again by uh, Shane Jones, who has some uh, uh, historically, as in his time in this house, had some nervousness around, uh, I guess, uh, how we comply with things in life. But um, but he certainly had some nervousness around this, and the committee did discuss this at length because it is a very complex subject if you think about it. Uh, and so so I think we did pretty well with that because we did spend a lot of time on that particular clause. Factory farming has been mentioned, very topical subject, and the bill will be tightened up. Uh, to deal with this, and, and I think we've got to a very good space with that as well as we move through uh, the process of implementing this bill, and it will take some time to implement this bill. Other issues taking much discussion related to live export. The band already for slaughter, but anyone who understands food well will understand that best food is highly dependent on its treatment from paddock to plate, and ill-treating of animals or plants prior to them entering the food chain has no future at all for food producers. And, and whilst I fully support the banning of live export for, for slaughter, I think there could be occasions arise in the future where we may want to, in a boutique form, export animals that, or, or whatever that will, then be, uh, that will then enter the food chain at some future. Now, this bill doesn't exactly preclude that, but our current regulations certainly do preclude it. But nonetheless, the world changes and, and transport modes and whatever could make a significant dis a difference to this. Our research, testing and teaching using animals, animal sentience, which has for some time been very topical, particularly for that well-known uh, animal uh, supporter, Bob Kerridge. Uh, whether a fish was a fish or an animal uh, was a topic that came up for quite some considerable discussion during the course of the bill. And part three of the bill was changed to, to clearly set some parameters around this. There was much discussion, particularly from the farming entities, as to how far a duty of care stretched, who is ultimately responsible for the care of an animal. 
Uh, and, and I guess this is topical in lots of legislation that comes through this House. And, and I think the bill again arrived at a very good space in that area because we've, we've come to a conclusion which I think clearly will define the person responsible for, for the treatment or otherwise of animals. A discussion took place on the funding of the compliance regime, like all funding uh, that governments face. It's difficult, but at the cur it's currently well managed by MPI. I think there will be challenges to that funding stream as this uh, act is, an, uh, as this, uh, is an acted later on, but nonetheless I think we're getting on pretty well now. Uh, psychoactive substances came and went during the course of the bill, and cosmic, cosmetic testing, as mentioned by the Minister, also came in for much attention. I struggle to uh, see on a lighter note the difference really between shampooing a horse for a show or to get rid of lice or testing cosmetics, lipstick I guess, on a horse. But, uh, but nonetheless it's an interesting topic and it will <laughs> involve a lot of debate from now on. <laughs> nonetheless, uh, the Minister has mentioned that more will be heard on this topic. <laughs> Uh, Mr Speaker, this is a very complex issue and one we must deal with with care. <laughs> one we must deal with care as it, it is, and it is very important to us all. And finally, Mr Speaker, I can't stop without uh, just mentioning one last thing. I notice in the course of the Labor, uh, the Labor uh, portfolio analysis they don't have a spokesman on agriculture. I notice that the spokesman for the Greens on agriculture is probably... Is prob <laughs> we have a Minister for Primary Production. I notice that, that the man that the spokesman for the Greens is probably out there buttering himself up with a dock leaf somewhere. And, uh, and I'm not sure whether Winston or Richard Prosser is the spokesman for the, for the New Zealand First. Anyway, Mr Speaker, I think we've done a great job with this bill, and I commend it to the House.